Good morning and welcome to our online service and in-house. We're back in the house again. Remember what we said, if you want to attend service, just make sure that you get to us by Friday at five o'clock uh, and just go to contact on the website. Let us know uh, that you want to come and uh, we'll make provision if we can. Uh, if not, we'll let you know what's going on uh, with what's happening. But again, we want to take this opportunity to welcome you all into the house of God this morning. Uh, don't forget again that uh, we are still uh, dealing with the current um, uh, mandates that the governor has. So as far as singing and things like that, we're not doing any of that just yet. Uh, at some point in time, of, of course, when we begin that part of what we'll be doing, um, trying to adhere to what they've asked us to do and how to do that. At the same time, uh, we will probably start our broadcast at a little bit later. Uh, there are reasons for all of that. When you start uh, broadcasting things online, even if you have copyright uh, authorization under certain things, uh, there are certain songs and things you can't just play uh, that can end up loaded up on YouTube or some of these other platforms simply because the algorithm will capture the song as a copyrighted song and it won't allow the broadcast to go forward. So probably what will happen is once we get to the phase where we'll probably start uh, any uh, worship or anything like that, uh, we are definitely going to then move to probably the actual online service itself, starting uh, with the message. Uh, and that will probably not happen until, of course, uh, we're comfortable enough that if you want to come to church, you can. Uh, but at the same time, you still won't be forced uh, to do that. It'd be up to you. Um, at the same time, uh, if you get a chance, go invite somebody to church. All you got to do is go on the website, tell them to go to jclm.com or .org and just hit the blue button and it'll take them uh, directly to the broadcast that's happening live right now. Uh, at the same time, if for some reason you, you, know, you wanna either look at a service that's already happened or you're interested in having somebody do that, they can go to um, the website. And again, if they go to the tab that says media, uh, online media uh, or online video service and click on the library, it'll take you to the library of all the messages that we've done um, at least in the last three or four months uh, that they can look at and uh, listen to. Uh, don't forget the podcast. If, in fact, um, you're interested in just sending out the message to somebody in audio, uh, the podcast is available. There's an app in the um, app store out there, Podbean, uh, that basically they can listen to that. We get a lot of people listening in worldwide. Uh, we've got people from Kenya, Great Britain, Russia have been some of the uh, least uh, or latest, should I say, people that are listening in. So we're excited about that, that the word of God is making its way out to other folks and people. Uh, don't forget, Love Never Fails, uh, local outreach that we have. Of course, we talk about that, kind of try to mention it every week. Uh, we're in the process, again, of trying to come up with something that we'd like to do um, during the winter, winter months, but it's a little difficult, um, especially with the current situation that's going on, because, you know, you just want to make sure uh, that we're doing what we're asked to do and that we've been required to do uh, and to kind of stay in line with that. But to the extent that we can try to help uh, the community with some things, we were th trying to think through some things. Uh, but there have been various things this Lori has done. Uh, you probably saw some of those online already, the, the mask up campaign, the Bibles for youth and all that. And we're still in the process of doing that. So we just want to make sure uh, that we keep that uh, uh, in your minds as far as the things that we're working on and that we're doing, that God, in fact, has been uh, keeping us abreast of things that are happening in your local church. Uh, I'm excited about it. I keep telling people that I'm glad about the people that God has associated with our local church. Even during this time that we've gone through, um, people have been faithful in just in, in all the different areas that uh, we have asked and that you have been responsible for doing and uh, cooperating uh, as we have asked you to. So again, and thank you for that. Um, the devotional today, uh, don't forget that we have a, a weekly, um, a three month devotional that you can get. Uh, I try to read mine as best I can every day. Uh, at the same time, uh, we have a yearly devotional uh, that's available. If in fact you'd like a copy of the three month devotional, just let us know. All we've got to do is go online uh, and you put it in the contact, tell us who you want to send it to, or if you want us to send it to you, and we'll do that and take care of it and get it to you. At the same time, don't forget uh, that it's important, at least, that if you see something in it, I try to, like I said, I read it every day, uh, but sometimes also, you know, you can kind of have a blinding spot to something that you wrote yourself and you don't even see it even after you've read it. Uh, if you see something that doesn't make sense to you or that seems like it might be misspelled or anything like that, just let us know uh, and for sure we will get back to you. Um, 
and I just appreciate doing that only because I think it's just good to be able to um, uh, do that. As an example, I like to give you one. Since Lori always tells me, don't, in a way, you know, I don't point that out. But I, I like to do that because I want y'all to see. It's not something she did. It's just something I want you to see. I may have done it. It's the point. Um, on January the 20th, it was the title was The Lord Always See You. Yeah, the Lord always see you. Well, he do see you, but actually he sees you. OK, so I'm assuming all y'all saw that. But, you know, you just figured the pastor was going to fix it since he talked about it. Praise the Lord. All right. So today, January 24, this is what it says. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Proverbs 419. And it's entitled The Dark Path. It says, as compared to the path of the righteous, which shines brighter into a perfect day, the way of the wicked is dark. The Bible tells us that just as people stumble in the darkness of night, this is how the wicked are in life. Not only do they stumble, but they are unaware of what caused it. Ignorance of the laws of God is not a defense against the attack of Satan. Believing in fate, the stars, or even coincidence does not shield people from the truth. If we do not follow the wisdom of the true and only God, we will stumble and have no understanding as to why. This also tells the believer that if he stumbles, he can know the reason. God does not allow things to occur in our lives that serve no purpose. If we stumble, we must get up. But if as we rise, we should be looking for what we tripped over in the path. Pay attention to your decisions to avoid an unnecessary fall. And all I want to say in reference to that, and then I'm going to move on, is that, you know, the Bible says consistently that the word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And so in making the decisions that we make, um, just like during this time we're going through now, there are a lot of things that we have not had to suffer through because decisions we've made regarding uh, debt and other things that were already made a long time ago. Um, but at the same time, as you're going forward, each decision that you're making about the situation that's going on now in your life and whatever that means, give consideration to what God says about the thing and just do what the word says and trust it. Because in that way, uh, you'll keep the light on your path. All right. With that, we're going to go ahead now. Let's I want to mention the offerings. Don't forget tithes and offerings, and you all haven't forgotten that. We appreciate it. You go to jclm.org, uh, or you can text jclm to 73256. Again, I want to say, as I always do every Sunday, and I'll say it again, we appreciate your giving. We appreciate your faithfulness, because that is what has continued to help us to do what we do. Um, I was reading an article the other day where a guy was talking about um, how churches should do the best they can to try and have a piece of property of their own, something, you know, that the church uh, has. And he said, I know that, you know, the, the roofs leak and things happen. But the bottom line is it's your, it's your building. And the truth is that he's right, because you know what? The roof around here, every time I turn around, something leaking. And so uh, the bathroom now has a little leak in the kitchen. But again, that's because that side of the roof has not been um, redone probably in about five or six years. So when we bought the building, of course, the building had uh, flat roofs on the middle and the back. And so those are always something that has to be constantly dealt with because the sun that's beaming down on them and all that kind of stuff. So it's constantly. We try to stay off the roof. In other words, if you go up there and get to walking around on it, it's like think about it as a, um, a flat pie. And if you walk on a flat pie event, you're going to crack the crust. And that's what tends to happen. If you go up there for any reason and that roof has been that sun's on it and all that, and you get to walking around up there, it'll get to cracking. And then you can also just crack it. And the next thing you know, water's coming in. Sometimes we've got to go up there to do this uh, steeple. We clean the steeple or whatever. So you're trying not to stay up there just running around. You're not going to see us up there just hanging out. But at the same time, it's just like anything else. If you have a flat piece of pie sitting there and you let the sun bake on it long enough, eventually it'll just crack. So that's just life. Now, why did I say that? Not because I'm about to take the roof offering, but because I want to say because of your faithfulness, we never have to have those. Uh, the bottom line is that we just call the people out <laughs> and then let them go do what they got to do. We write them a check and they go their way and we go ours. Um, also, we've got some tree work to do. We've got a tree over there on the corner. It's constantly blooming and growing. We got some tree folks coming out. They're going to trim the tree out and cut all that out. And again, 
again, there's nothing we need to do. Had the alarm on the front door kept going off every so often. Didn't know what was going on. The guy came out. He says, well, it could be one of these four contacts. I said, well, we just fix them all. So they just fixed them all. So that way he says, because if one goes out, you never know which one going to go out. Well, then let's just fix them all. Thank God for you all, for everything you do, because we just don't have that problem around here from a maintenance standpoint or anything else. We are able to do it because of your faithfulness. And I just want to say again, thank each and every one of you for your continued faithfulness and your giving. And I'm sure that God will continue to bless your life for it. All right. We have some prayer requests. We're going to go ahead and see if we can take a look at these. Um, Sister Lori's uncle and her mom are having some medical tests done uh, this week. So we want to keep them in prayer. Um, Rachel Park is having some issues, kidney issues, uh, and we want to pray uh, concerning that. Um, Sister Tajay, um, her young two-year-old daughter, the dad, um, he was killed in an accident last night. Uh, so we want to see if we can um, pray about that and keep these people in prayer. Um, that, you know, her aunts, that sister Sheila and Tanja, and then uh, her grandmother, of course. And then so so that's a you know, they've got a support system. But at the same time, um, that's a tragic situation when you have young people uh, that die, uh, car accidents and things like that. But then also um, the daughter, um, you know, now, you know how they got to work with that situation. So let's be prayerful and uh, let's see if we can uh, go into prayer before. Uh, with God. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you right now for the opportunity again to come into your presence as the family of God. Father, in spite of this situation that's going on in the earth, you continue to show us your faithfulness and your goodness and your grace. We pray, Father, concerning all these people that are having medical tests this week, um, Miss Fos and Joe Fos, and we pray for them that, Father, you will uh, bless them and allow these tests to come back positive for their lives. We pray for this young lady, Rachel Park, concerning her kidney issues. And we know, Father, that the Bible says that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. We pray now in Jesus name that from the crowns of their heads to the soles of their feet, that they will be healed of any problem that they have and test free of any problem that they're being tested for. We pray and ask in Jesus name concerning uh, the death of this young man and his car accident, we just pray in Jesus' name that the family associated with him and those that are associated in this situation, Father, that you would bring the healing and understanding that is necessary in times like this. Many times we do not understand the reason these things occur, but one thing we do know that we were taught by Jesus, that the devil is the one who comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. And Father, we pray now in Jesus' name that you would bring comfort to this family, comfort to this child. And as she grows older and as her mom, that they will be able, Father, to deal with the situation and, Father, to understand that growing closer to Christ is the only answer in times of trouble like this. Father, we pray in Jesus' name, comfort and with the church in whatever way we need to reach out, we pray that you might guide us and direct us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right. God bless you all. We're going to get ready now at this time to do our Bible confession. And as we get ready to do that, we want to pay attention to what we always know to be true. When we shifted our confession this year, we did it to the scriptures in Isaiah. And so we're going to go ahead and do that now. All right. You ready? Today I will confess and believe that Jesus Christ was wounded for my transgressions, that he was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with Jesus' stripes, I am healed. All right, praise the Lord. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. You know, we've been doing a lesson over the last couple of weeks and we started a while back um, talking about spiritual gifts. And um, we said that we were going to get into all that. And we began to do spiritual gifts and we went through the different categories of gifts. And uh, the, the last ones we got to were the speaking gifts. And we uh, spent the last two weeks talking about prophets and prophecy. And we talked about how God 
had basically, I believe, last year helped us to see plainly that this is an area fraught with problems and the possibilities of people stirring up things um, that, you know, really don't come to pass the way they say. And that the tests throughout the scriptures are clear. And I heard a guy the other day again say, just because I was wrong don't mean I I'm wrong. I said, well, okay, I understand. And I'm not trying to even get into debating all that. Um, but I, do, I will say this, you know, and, and I prayed about it. And I really believe that this is where um, the Lord wants me to be about where we are right now. If you feel that you personally in the, our church have the gift of prophecy, or you think you are a prophet, please see me. And we can discuss that more in detail. But having any additional discussion about, you know, let's talk about how it works and, and let's how you do it, it's not going to do us any good. At least that was my prayer as I thought about it. Uh, simply because one, as I told you, I don't think we don't have prophets in the New Testament church. I believe that this may very well be so. But I think they're so limited that I think any additional discussion about it, all it does is kind of like adding sand to the beach right now based on what I've already said. And prophecy likewise, based on what I've said so far, I think that, you know, other than trying to talk about how it actually works or something like that, um, I don't know the benefit to which it adds if somebody doesn't think for whatever reason they possess such a gift. Now, somebody might say to me, well, Pastor, how would I know? Well, if you don't know, then you probably don't have it. All right. Yeah. And so if you don't even <laughs> sense the fact that you might, have, then you probably don't have it. So we don't worry about it. And I think that the best thing to do is to move. That's the sense I've been getting and as I've been praying. And I got something that was tied to exactly this thing. And the Lord really, 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 I sensed as I was praying time to push into something. And so the title of today's message is called Chaff or Wheat. Um, and I'm going to give you my thesis, like I said, I would. And then I'm going to read some scriptures. And then we're going to see if we can't barrel down into this and you'll see why uh, I'm excited about this. Uh, not just this, but just period, right? Praise the Lord. All right. Here's, here's the thesis. No prophecy, dream, or counsel is more sure and able to bring you life than God's word. No prophecy, dream, or counsel is more sure and able to bring you life than God's word. Now, we're going to go to the book of Jeremiah to start, Jeremiah chapter 23, and we're going to read verse 25 through 30 there, and then we're going to look at a couple of other verses in the New Testament, but that's where we're going to start. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 25, and we're going to read to verse 30. I have heard what the prophet said that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. That's why I said you need to come see me. <laughs> if you want to be a prophet, because I'm telling you, God gets serious about these people. Galatians, Galatians. We're going to go to the book of Galatians and we want to read Galatians. And we're going to read chapter, go to chapter five. We'll read verse 16 through 26. Galatians 5, 16 through 26. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. 
Now the works of the law are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have told you also in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Now go to Hebrews chapter three. Go to Hebrews chapter three. And let's take a look at Hebrews chapter three. And let's look at verse 13. We'll just look at verse 13. And you see right here, and we said prophecy was for what? Exhortation and comfort. Here he says right here in verse 13, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Now let's go to down to chapter four and let's look at verse 12 and 13. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. All right. Last place. Let's go to Second Peter. Second Peter, chapter one. Second Peter chapter one, and we're going to begin at verse one and we'll read through verse four. Second Peter one, one through four. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus, our Lord according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to the glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you again for the opportunity to come into your house. We thank you for the word of God. And we ask today that you would continue to lead us and guide us into your truth. We ask it now in Jesus name. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Now, after reading those scriptures, hopefully you'll see why I'm all excited about where we are now. God has brought us through last year and now we're in 2021. And of course, you can see not a whole lot's changing. Uh, as a matter of fact, some things are getting a little bit crazier as time goes on in terms of, you know, uh, the economy and everything else. You know, I was trying to explain to somebody earlier this week to get them to just understand briefly kind of what we're up against, even as a nation um, economically. And, and I use in Bible study as an example, I said, just in, in order to easily understand where we are, think about if you yourself, um, let's say you took home, I said $5,000 a month, but you need $6,000 a month to, to just be break even. And that, that doesn't mean you go pay off all your debt. So you have your home loan, your car loan, you have all the loans that you have. Right. And whatever credit card loan, whatever, every loan you have. But in order to make all your payments, you need five thousand dollars, which means you still got all the debt now. But you still need to make five thousand dollars to make the payments on the loans, the mortgages, the car note, all that. But you still need a thousand dollars more in order to make all those payments. So at the end of the month, every month you borrow that thousand dollars. And then that thousand dollars, of course, has interest payments that are due on it. And then so every month you borrow the thousand dollars. So by the time you get to the end of the year, you borrow twelve thousand more dollars than the dollars you already owed that you are paying each month on the debt you have, which means your debt has grown by twelve thousand dollars by the end of the year. So it grows a thousand a month every month. So you have a thousand dollar deficit. You have a twelve thousand dollar yearly deficit on payments. So that means on debt, you still got debt, 
You're still paying debt down, but you're creating $12,000 a year more debt just to keep up with the payments to live and on the debt you have. Simple. That's very simple. The United States, it's $1 trillion. Right, that's it. Now, so do you imagine, and, and people say, I'm so glad interest rates are low. Do you know why they're keeping them low? Because can you imagine what the U.S. government would have to pay at 4% or 5% on a trillion dollars of debt it's borrowing every year? To give you some perspective, <laughs> help us, Jesus. From George Washington to George Bush, <laughs> the debt was a certain amount. From Bar George Bush, Barack Obama's administration had to borrow as much as George Washington to George Bush in order to keep up. Donald Trump's administration <laughs> added on as much as Barack Obama's administration added on in four years instead of eight. It appears that Joe Biden's administration will add on more than Donald Trump's administration. It might be this year, but definitely within two, which means that we have gone from $8 trillion we owed in 2008, and people were saying $10 trillion was our credit limit. You know, we all got credit limits. Y'all understand that, right? You know, y'all knew that card y'all got, and, and they keep sending you one saying transfer it here, and we'll give you a low rate. But we all got a limit. Use this based on our income. So some had said America's limit, 15 trillion max before people run for the doors, right? Well, we hit, I think, 15 trillion not too long ago. Today we stand at 27 trillion. And now probably we'll hit 30 pretty soon. Arguably, we have passed the credit limit, whatever it is. But of course, some are just saying, hey, Send some extra payments to everybody. Let's just all get a check monthly. Now, I'm not against checks. I've come to the point that Lord's like, look, just let's deal with it. I'm just trying to get you to understand the game of Jenga we are now currently in. Or musical chairs or whatever you choose to call it because of the precipice we are currently on. I mean, it is, it's a precipice that has never, ever, ever even been explored, right? But not understanding things always creates problems for people in their lives. Today, I entitled the message chaff or wheat for a reason based directly out of the word of God. Now, God says that at the time, and it comes on the hinges of us talking about prophecy and prophets, and it comes on the after last year's year uh, of all of the stuff that occurred. And now as we move into this year. God says that there are always people who are trying to encourage everybody and believing that exhortation is always about making everybody happy as much as making everybody really understand the gravity of a situation. Now, for us as people, I don't care so much about what's happening with America's debt as much as that will just push us further into where people end up at is their relationship to God. But the reality we need to understand is what God told Jeremiah. And what Jeremiah then came forth and said, this is why I said in the beginning, if you think you're a prophet, you got some prophecy, hold that, let's talk about it before you start prophesying to people. One, because God said that he's heard what the prophet said. Let's go back and look at it. This was in Jeremiah 23, verse 25. He says, I have heard what the prophet said, that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Now, you got to wonder, well, who is he talking about? Because, you know, I haven't found one prophet yet who's popped up and said, you know what? I'm a lying prophet. I mean, you never hear people say that. People are just telling you their dreams, telling you their visions. And if you look at America, America is so filled. And we've done this for years. These churches, we've preached this for years. And what we do not understand is much of what we have been calling God's blessing is nothing other than us living the way America lives. The bottom line is what we don't understand is America's prosperity has been debt driven. I don't know why people don't get this. If you had think about it, if you had an unlimited credit line 
and you could borrow as much as you wanted to borrow. And when you couldn't make your payments, you could borrow to make those payments. Wouldn't you be prosperous? Well, I mean, you would have a lot of stuff and you would look prosperous. But underneath would be this big gargantuan iceberg of debt that eventually when somebody crashes into it, your life will come tumbling down. Most people, because they don't realize what's been going on, don't recognize that much of what we call prosperity has really been borrowing. People borrow to get stuff that, you know, they tell you, look, we'll give you 30 years to pay for it. We don't even know if we're going to be here next week, but we'll give you 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. And everything that we do, they say even now, the uh, uh, most car payments for most cars is seven years now. They'll let you borrow for seven years. Do you know most cars don't last seven years? And most people don't want to have one for seven years. The reality is it has gotten to a place where if people were to just analyze it, they would see. But God is like, you know what? People have been prophesying this stuff to you and giving you these dreams. And people have been walking in this stuff. And now many people are faced with tremendous issues. You know why? Because they ate the straw. They ate the straw. If I walked up to you and I said, you know, you're there for when I go to most restaurants and if I'm getting some type of thing where it has a um, those little tortilla things, they'll ask me, do you want a regular one or you want whole wheat? You know, they'll, they'll ask you something like that. I've never had them ask me, do you want straw or wheat? What kind of toast you want, straw or wheat? No, it's white or wheat, but it's bread. God says that as far as he's concerned, these dreams and these prophets and all this stuff they're telling you. He said in verse 28, the prophet that hath the dream, let him tell you his dream. That's all these visions everybody done had and what we going to do and all this stuff coming out of people's hearts that ultimately did not and was not pushing and promoting Jesus as much as it was promoting and pushing what people had in their own hearts. And the people bought into it because they love that stuff, right? And the reality is, when it's over, he says this, let, him, let the one with a dream tell his dream. But let the one that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. For what is the chaff to the wheat? See, God says that all these dreams and visions and all this stuff we be having ourselves is all chaff. It's all chaff where his word is really the wheat that feeds us. Then he goes down and says this, is not my word like a fire? Y'all remember that game they would play? Yeah, you know, yeah, <laughs> rock, paper, scissors. You know, bottom line is God says, look, <laughs> oh my God, my word is like a hammer. Come on now, look, God say wheat, fire, Hammer. God says, my word is like a hammer that breaks rocks up. Look, my dream, my counsel, my vision cannot break up the problem you have in your life. It can't bust up your bad marriage and make it work. It can't bust up the problems you might be having in your own finances about your life. My dream, my vision, my talking my, out of my head cannot Fix the issues that anybody has in their life. It can't save you, which is really the main thing you're concerned about. It can't do any of that. God says, no, it's my word. My word is like a fire. God says, look, you can go in there and all you can talk about all you want. But if your dream does not somehow line up with my word where you can take scripture by scripture because the Bible does say in one place that God will use dreams to seal up your instructions. He says it in Job. You know, the other day I was looking at all of the stuff going on out here with money and everything and I'm looking and saying, well, Lord, I wonder about all that. And, you know, you get these little things about gold and silver and all this other stuff. So I was looking and I, in my head, you know, I go back and forth thinking about it sometime. And I was like, Lord, you know, I just need a little wisdom on what you want me to do right now about all these things. I said, there's so much stuff going on. And, and so sure enough, I went to bed and bam. So I had a dream. Well, my dream wasn't to come tell y'all what to go do, but it sealed up instruction for me. So in other words, in terms of preach, could I, could it, did it make sense? Yes. Everything in it lined up exactly with the word of God. 
I'm sitting there looking in a lake. It's full of silver. So I get, I'm getting all the silver out and I get it in a box. Next thing you know, the box is filled with ants. There are ants everywhere, right? And then so I'm, 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 next thing I'm moving, I'm moving along and I got all this stuff, all these bags in this box. Well, I go get some toilet tissue and clean all the ants off the bag. And then I get ready to get to where the bus is and I drop the box. Well, all that's in the box is a bunch of old receipts. And then the next thing you know, somebody took my bags and I, left, I missed the bus. And I woke up and it was like, I already knew that was about... All right. You keep on worrying about that silver. Worry about your worldly things. You get it all in a box. Ants are all about what the Bible says. Consider the ant. He always moving, always moving, always gathering for what? The harvest. So when it get bad, he'll have it. But guess what? When the time came to catch the bus, you dropped the box and wasn't nothing in it. You're wasting your time. Don't worry about all that. Stay in the word and make sure you stay faithful to what the word says. Don't worry about all this stuff going on right now. You're not going to be able to save some stuff no matter what you do. As you look at what's going on, just stay with the word. And I can find scripture for everything that was in it. Now that God didn't come tell me to tell you my dream. God told me, come tell you the word. God said, come give them the word. The word, the chaff versus the wheat. I can give you dreams all day long. Tell you what I think. You can tell me you had one. You can tell me anything you want. The reality is God says my word is like a fire. It's like a flame. Look at this. In, in, in Revelation chapter 20, here's a frightening scene, right? Revelation chapter 20, I want to go over here. And, we, and this is what we really need to be. This is the bus we got to catch. Revelation chapter 10, I mean, chapter 20, verse 10 says this. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead small and great. So that means anybody in here, anybody listening, it don't matter who they are, he saw them all. Stand before God and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Wow. Revelation 21, 7 and 8 says this. He that overcometh shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Well, okay. Now, it seems to me <laughs> that if we all know the final destination, you know, God says, look, I'm trying to help people. This little temporary thing we going through and we dealing with that we call life, we could spend our time in these places we call churches while they sitting there talking to us. And I ain't talking about the chicken place. We call churches that, in fact, are doing what? Helping us to live a great life, we call it. And I don't have a problem with a great life. I never have. What I got a problem with is chaff. Folks, look, <laughs> there's a difference between the word and chaff. I can give you my dreams. I can tell you what I think God means by something. But you have to take the word of God and go scripture by scripture, line by line, precept by precept to come to the end result of what you believe. Now, the reality is the Bible tells us everyone is going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, small and great. It doesn't matter where you died or where you are. You're going to get found. If you died in the sea at sea, don't worry. God know where you at. If you died in a fire off somewhere, don't worry. God know where you at. No matter where you died, God will find you and you will be brought back to what? 
face God. That's an awesome thing. See, this is why I say as Christians, it's easy to decide if we want to be a Christian or not. Because the Bible is so ridiculous in what it says is going to happen, it should be easy to make a decision. If you believe it, then you understand how serious this is. I understand you had a dream, Pastor. I understand you got some counsel for me, Pastor. But what does the word of God say about what you're talking about? And the Bible makes it so clear that it's my responsibility as I stand before God. And he says, look, my word is the fire that burns through. My word is the hammer that breaks it all up. Don't worry about what other people are saying or what they're saying about it. What does the word say? The word is clear on things. Look at what we saw in Hebrews. Let's go back over there right quick. Let's see what we saw in Hebrews. In, in Hebrews, we saw in Hebrews chapter 3. Verse 13. Let me let me get to it right quick. Just think about this. Now, now look at what we're doing today. See, see, we're not talking about what pastor think about none of this. Let's just read it. And, and, and I just expound it to the point that I'm like, you might not say anything else. Hebrews 3.13. Look at it. The Bible says that they were coming. They were out there in the wilderness. And the Bible says this. Exhort one another. Y'all know who that is? Me, you. Let's exhort each other. While it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. In other words, we live in our lives every day doing stuff that God considers sin. And instead of us reconciling ourselves to God and figuring out what we need to be doing and living right, we keep living and we're getting hardened each day. So every time something happens, we don't realize that we're getting harder and harder and harder. And it's harder for God to communicate with us. It's harder for us to hear God. And therefore, what? We are put setting ourselves up for what the Bible says is going to be a judgment we don't want to face. I'm not interested in facing Jesus Christ to hear him say to me, you spent all your time talking to people about how to get things that I told you anybody can get. I'm telling y'all, if we want to spend our time, I told you, in the United States, the easiest thing to do at one point in time was to get a car. I mean, seriously, as long as you had no credit, it even got to the point now you can have bad credit. Because people want to loan you something. They want you to do it. They want you to buy. How did that become a blessing? How do you walk away owing somebody money when God already says that when it's over, the borrower is the servant of the lender? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you can't because that's just where we are right now. Most people don't have enough to do those things. I'm fine. But don't walk away talking about you blessed. Why? How do we get deceived out of what the word says? You see, the countries, the reason it's going to get so hard in America is because the problem is so many people are accustomed to financing their prosperity. That the problem is going to be, even though we're going to be more prosperous than any nation, we still going to feel like we broke. Yeah. I said to myself the other day, I said, I want to try and see. On, I'm going to take three days and find out how much did I spend and what, did, what, what was I doing? So I got up in the morning and I walked 10 miles and I did the few things I did and I didn't really eat anything that day. So I said, oh, wow, that's pretty good. I can walk 10 miles and didn't even eat a meal that day. Then the next day I walked 10 miles and I did a couple of things and I didn't eat a meal that day. Then the next day I walked 10 miles and I didn't I didn't eat a meal that day. Well, I proved something to myself. They lie when they say you go three days without eating, you're going to die. They lying. Don't let them lie to you. But I'm telling you this, if you've built your life on believing a lie, it sure gonna feel like it if you've never gone there. See, we are so accustomed in this country that what? You go to other countries, these people know what it means to eat one meal a day. In America, the homeless ain't gonna have no problem when they ain't got a home. <laughs> that means they ain't never had one. They live on the streets all the time. They're always out there begging for something, doing whatever they're doing, whereas most people are not understanding that. We're so accustomed to sitting in front of our television set. Lord, if, the, if it just stops sending a signal. We spent COVID a year inside, and people are almost about to lose their minds. 
when there's some people who've never even been inside a house. See, the point that I'm trying to get across is that if you're not careful, you can become hard to things. Sin is the one you definitely don't want to become hardened to. You got to understand the Bible says we have to exhort each other. We have to be saying things to understand that what we may be missing God at times. Instead of always talking about our dreams and our visions and our future and what God doing so great and wonderful that really when you go out and look at the world, everybody's doing that. Everybody's striving to go to college and everybody's striving to do well in life. And some of them are. I could send you to a Tony Robbins uh, camp for motivation and he'll let you run across some hot coals and talk about stuff. And before you know it, you too can be a billionaire. Is that all there is to life? Come on now. We already know that this is not true, but we've got to understand why God kept saying, don't let the prophets lie to you. Prophesying lies and prophesying dreams. I'm listening to it now. And then, oh, this 2021 going to be the great year of the Lord. OK, we'll see. We'll see. All I can say is that people need to get in the word and ask yourself the question. Look at. Uh, uh, um, let me see here. Hebrews 4, 12 and 13. Look at what we saw. This is what the Bible, this is why you cannot be living your life where you're not reading the word of God on a daily basis. Hebrews 4, 12 and 13, look at what it says. For the word of God, not your dreams, not your vision, not your positive thinking, not your confessions, not your affirmations. The word of God is alive and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword. It pierces even to the dividing asunder of your soul and spirit and the joints and the marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Wow. Isn't it great to have a God who says you want to know why you depressed today? Do you really want to know? I'll help you if you really want to know. Do you really want to know why you're pursuing endless hopelessness? <laughs> because that's what your dreams really are most of the time. You're pursuing things and pursuing things only to go up a ladder and to get to the top and realize there's nothing there. But people say, well, pastor, you can say that because, you know, no, I'm just saying it because the word says it. The word tells us plainly that we need to be careful. Does the Bible say we shouldn't work? Absolutely not. It tells you that. Does the Bible say you should not get married? Absolutely not. It tells you you can. Well, what is it saying? It's telling me that God has a way that he wants his people to live. And it's not what comes out of my head. Not what comes out of your head, not dreams and visions all the time, lest they line up with what the word of God says. What did Jesus say about a thing? Right. He says that it's sharper than any two edged sword. Now, now I want you to think about something. When you look at Second Peter, we went over there and I want to look at something here. When you look at Second Peter, chaff a week. Think about that when next time the waitress walk up to you. Usually they're offering you something. If they say, would you like, what would you like to drink? Water or whatever you order as a drink or whatever the case might be, right? You know that they're not trying to serve you something that you can't drink, okay? And what if they walked up to you and said, would you like, as I've said to you all in the past, we've got bottled water with one drop of spit. Or would you like lemon with your water? Well, now, of course, you know, your response would be, that's ridiculous. Why would you even ask me that? Why would I want water with spit in it? <laughs> and precisely. So why would you want to eat chaff? God declares that anything outside of his word is chaff. So why would you want chaff? Why would you go buy a book about somebody telling you about God instead of just reading what God said? Now, I'm not getting down on books. I'm just not. I mean, I got the daily devotional. That's nice. You read it. I heard what you said, Pastor. But guess what? Now, you got to make sure you read the word for yourself. 
It's supposed to give you something to think about, somewhere to jump off. But the word of God is the one that what? Cuts and divides. And God says, you want me to show you why you depressed? Come go over here with me to Ecclesiastes for a minute. Let's read this. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. Do you know that every time I think about getting started on some projects, that's the first thing that comes to me? I've gone to some places and I've looked at something and I've thought about all I could get done. And the first thing I heard Solomon was saying, vanity, you about to vex your spirit. Then I start thinking deeper about why am I trying to do this? And sometime all of a sudden I find out because really I'm just bored. And that's when I realized, you know what? Let me go get the word and go read. Let me just go do something else right now instead of what? Trying to respond to an itch. Many times people are buying new things only because they're responding to an itch that they can't never get scratched. God says, look, if you'll take the word, the word will do what? Burn out like a fire, like a hammer. It'll bust up the rocks so you can see what's going on. Folks, look at what Second Peter said. In Second Peter 1 through 4, we read this. I want you, though, to pay attention, though, to verse 4. He says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. See, the Bible says that the corrupting manner of the world on our lives, what causes our lives to corrupt, to rust, to, to have holes in it, to become distressful is the lust that is in the world. The desire on our part to participate at a level that God has no longer called us to is what causes the corrupting effect in our lives. We want to be the greatest this. We want to be the top that. We want to be whatever. And God does not mind taking care of you. But at the same time, it just may not be his call for you to be the best X or the number one Y or whatever else the case you're lusting after. Lust is not just about sex, and that's what people are always wanting to say. They always want to think about the dirty, nasty things instead of realizing that Peter says we have been given great, exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. In other words, we're given promises from Jesus that if we will overcome he says that through you overcoming, you shall inherit. But those who don't are going to find themselves cast outside the city of God and into the lake of fire. Folks, this is serious business. In other words, I am, I am, we are, should be moving in a direction with the understanding that we all have an appointment with death. I said today, you know, there's a young man who uh, we prayed for. Uh, he died in an accident. I'm sure he didn't plan that death. That's why they call it an accident. And all of us, as we live and walk and move through this life, must understand that because nothing is guaranteed, we have to be keeping the corrupting effects out of our lives so that when it's time for us to meet Jesus, we hear him say what we want to hear him say. Come in. If you believed <laughs> that outside that door today, or wherever you are right now in your home watching this, that if you walked outside your door, somebody would shoot you down dead, would you go out there? Most people would say, no, Pastor, I wouldn't. And I would like to think that would be your answer. So why then am I telling you, you are not going to get out of this alive. And you don't know when you're going to get out. And you must face Jesus on the day of judgment. Why would I allow anything to corrupt the life that I'm living? Why wouldn't I be vigilant to understand and be watching it using the word of God to say, not my dreams, not your dream, not what some prophet told me, not some prophecy, not anybody. I don't care what they're saying is going to happen. What does the word of God tell me about my life and about what I'm pursuing and what I'm doing? How do I see myself in the mirror of the word of God? What do I see? When I stand up and I look at it and I'm depressed today, 
Why am I depressed? See, I should be able to look at it and say, why am I troubled? What's bothering me? And the word of God will be able to tell me whether that thing is of God or the devil. I'm distressed today because I haven't prayed. Well, sound like you need to get on your knees and get in prayer. I'm distressed today because I haven't got a chance to read my Bible yet. Well, it sounds like you need to get on there and read your Bible. Oh, that's the word of God, right? And the word will show that. I'm distressed today. I miss my TV show. I'm distressed today. I didn't get the promotion that I've been dreaming about. I'm distressed today because my vision is not coming to pass. You go right in the word and you can see right there, the Bible says, guess what? Your dreams and your visions are like chaff. Now, I ain't trying to hurt nobody's feelings and blow your little bubble up, but I'm just trying to get you to understand. I'm not, you know, now if you can go to them churches, they got plenty of them out there. You can go everywhere you want to go. They got not just churches, they got lots of places like this. That'll tell you, God want to fulfill your dream. But let me tell you what dream I heard him say he won't fulfill first. And that is that we understand that the word of God is what we're going to be held to as a standard. And Peter says we corrupt our lives through lust. Now, I want you to look at something. This is why the Bible says, and I didn't, I didn't tell her to put that scripture up. I just want to stay here for a moment when the Bible talks about in John. He says that everything, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, that's why God hates the world. The Bible says God hates the world, not the people in it, but the system. He says because the system of the world is based on pride, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes. So I'm so busy trying to convince you that I'm better than you by doing what? Having things you can see that shows you. I'm better than you. Or I'm trying to prove to you I'm as good as you. Or I'm doing better than others. By what? What you see. It also adds to my pride that I feel that I've accomplished something. Look at what I've done. This is why many people get caught up in this profit thing because, man, to have God talk to you, that's something. He don't talk to everybody. God talks to few people. But let me tell you what really happens when God really gets to talk to you sometime. Now, Paul wrote all of this in the Bible. And everybody running around won't be apostle and prophets and all the stuff they be saying. But let, let, let's just throw this out as a quick example. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, I'm going to read uh, verse 7 through 18 through you. And this is what Paul is saying, knowing that he's about to get out of here. And he's getting out because they're going to behead him now. Paul says, <clears throat> I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them that also love his appearing. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me, for Demas hath forsaken me. Having loved this present world and is departed unto Thessalonica, Cretans to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Can you hear Paul's pain as he's writing? Yeah, I know everybody all excited about their dreams and God called me to this and ooh, I got a ministry and all that. Here's a man that God really spoke to and God really used. We have evidence of him being used. Matter of fact, his, his, his quote is probably on so many people's um, little epitaph. And them little programs, I have fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. How many times do you see that somewhere after somebody's died and it's at their funeral on the program? But look at the context in which he uses it. He's been forsaken by his friends. People have left him. Then look at what he says. And Tychicus have I sent to Ephesus. The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus when thou comest, bring with thee and the books, but especially the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom be thou ware also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. 
Paul said, in other words, that his first defense, when he was called to defend himself and the gospel, nobody stood with him. That is absolutely amazing. Today, everybody running around, Paul, 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 they got Paul, they quote Paul, they all got little cards, they the prophet, this one, the apostle, that one. But Paul says, when the, it hit the fan, <laughs> see, I got saved. <laughs> Paul said, I was standing there all by myself because it was on. Now the world in all of its vengeance had come down on him. It's one thing to talk you standing and you claiming you standing and you got all that stuff when it's still all right. But there finally came a moment when the real test was on, everybody left him. That's shameful. Paul said, I pray it not be laid to their charge. That's the kind of person you don't want to be that person. Now, many of us may never face the kind of trial or whatever it might be that would cause you to want to run. But I would like to think that, you know, if five of us went to the mall and somebody decided they wanted to jump on me because they saw me, we're going to get him. At least one of y'all will stay. Help me out. I wouldn't want to have to turn around and see all I see is the heels of your shoes. Because you're running. Well, Pastor, it was, it was 40 of them. Well, well, there were at least five of us. Could we, could we try? Well, they was after you, Pastor. We figured we live and we would tell your story. Pastor was a brave fighter. But you got to understand the odds, Pastor. Well, look, the Bible is so clear about how God perceives these things. When the pressure, folks, it's one thing for us to say we believe something. And I don't have a problem with that. But it's another thing when we're dealing with the daily problems of life. Let, let, let's go and look at Galatians chapter five. Now, now, in Galatians five, this is what we see. Paul lays out for us some, something to help us fully understand what God is asking of us. Forget the rest of the world now. We're Christians. I mean, either we're Christians or we're not. If we're Christians, then that means that Jesus has called us out of the world, delivered us. And Peter said, the way that you keep from corrupting yourself is to stay away from the lust that will do that to you. But a decision has to be made. Look at what the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5 in 16 through 26, we read it, but let's look at what it says. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now, Think about this. The Bible is saying that God has given us his spirit. And by giving us his spirit, he says, now you're not like they were in the Old Testament. They had the law. But Paul said in Romans, they could not do what the law said because they were powerless to get it done. Paul talked about this battle in his mind. He says, there's something I want to do. But for whatever the reasons are, I can't do it. I know what's right. I can see the law. I understand it all. I know what's right, but evil is always with me. Then he says, oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from the body of this death? Why did he know it was death? Because God said the wages of sin is death. And if you keep doing what you're doing and living like you're living, you're going to die. Not only are you going to die here, but that second death will also have rule over your life. He says, but thanks be to God through Jesus. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. 
But the spirit of the law of life in Christ Jesus has redeemed me from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his only son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Therefore, we are no longer debtors to the flesh that we live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, we will die. But now we mortify our flesh through the spirit. His job is not telling just, let me help you get a car. Let me help you prophesy about your next house. Let me this. No, I don't have a problem with God. Now, y'all know I said that. I got a problem with you dying with a box full of receipts that don't mean nothing. And you missed the bus. Folks, I'm telling you, when that bus come for you, <laughs> it don't wait. The bus, when it passes by, it don't wait. And when I mean you missed the bus, that means missed opportunity. If you go look it up, missed the bus means missed opportunity. If you miss the bus, if you miss this opportunity, always to recognize that what? The word itself will do what? Watch over your life. It'll help protect you. And the spirit of God will empower you if you let him. People say it's so hard to live the Christian life. I know it is. That's why it's called a war. Don't y'all understand this? See, see, we got to get away from away from this stuff about, well, you know, it's not hard to live the Christian life. Well, we're going to say this. The Christian life is a warfare. Why do you think the Bible says the spirit lusts against the flesh, the flesh against the spirit? But the Bible says you are no longer under the dominion of the law. Sin has no more dominion over you. Now, most of us say, I can't believe that because I sin every day. Well, you need to work on it. You know, the bottom line is you may have sin. Hey, we got problems. All of us got problems. But what the Bible says for sure is what? Shall we continue in sin that grace can abound? God forbid. Uh-uh. What we do is every time we get knocked down or whatever, we get up. And we say, I refuse to follow the flesh. I'm not going to do it. You have to make a decision, though, because if you <laughs> if you don't make a decision, what's going to happen is you'll get hardened. The Bible says I'm supposed to exhort you daily while it's called today. So when you leave or you turn that TV off, you know what? Oh, you heard the word today. Yeah, the word is like a fire that came blazing through your life, even though what? You was feeling pretty good this morning. Then pastor came along and burned up my dream. <laughs> Wasn't pastor. It's the word of God saying, look, pay attention. I got something over here. And boom, boom, boom. It's getting busted up. Why? Because God is trying to keep me what? Soft. God wants me to remain sensitive to the fact that the devil is always roking about looking for who he can trick. Look at what it says in Galatians a little bit further. He says this, look. He says, now the works of the flesh are manifest. See, now, in other words, God's like, look, I don't want y'all tricked. I ain't trying to trick you. You don't need no dreams. You don't need no vision. I'm going to put it right here in the word. Now, let me burn through your life for a minute, he said. Adultery, fornication. So you see, so when you meet that little man and he talking about, I can't understand how God got a problem with two people that love each other. It don't say that. Adultery, fornication, except them that love each other. It just say fornication. Now, I ain't mean come burn through your life. But that's why the Bible says, stay out of your dreams. I had a dream about him last night. It got to be the Lord. It was so wonderful. We was dancing through the park. I wouldn't care if you was dancing through heaven. <laughs> the Bible tell you how that relationship better be going. Because if not, if you get caught and the bus happens to be out there, See, when I say miss the bus, I'm not talking about you missed it and somehow you get to stay around. Missing the bus is that moment when you die and you ain't right with God. It's a missed opportunity to be right with God. When you miss the bus, it's too late. The bus gone, ain't running by no more. 
I got to make sure that I am what? Not being hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin will deceive you to make you think it's all right. Something that you're doing because what? Ain't nothing happened yet. It's all good. I don't know what nobody talking about my life. Just fine. Okay. God says, I'm trying to warn you. I ain't trying to hurt you. I don't want to hurt anybody. God even tells us there's going to be a judgment and, and y'all going to all great and small. You're not going to be able to stand up and say, well, Lord Jesus, I thought y'all you was going to get pastor. I thought you were just going to judge the presidents and the, 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 the senators and the big people. Where'd you get that, he says? Right here in the word, I told you. Great and small, everybody's going to stand before my judgment seat. Then he tells us, look, <laughs> uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresy, envying, murders, drunkenness, level, revelings, and such like of which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So if we practice these things, God says, you're not going to inherit the king. Wow. Now, do you see why I could get depressed reading the word? Lest I understand that the source of this depression is good. Because the Bible now tells me in 1 Peter, God is trying to keep you from the devil corrupting your life so that you miss the ultimate. This is like exercise. You know, every day when I go out and walk, I sound like, a, uh, and run whatever I'm doing, I sound like, oh, it's so great and wonderful. I hate it. I look at it all the time like, oh, my God, I've only been seven miles. I've got three more to go. I never look at it and go, I've been seven. And all I got is three. I, I, I never like that. It's always like, oh, my God. And then get to that where you got 9.5. It's like, oh, man, 0.5. Oh, that's what the Christian life, I ain't trying to make it seem like it's supposed to be so bad because that's not the point, but you're in a war. You got to say to yourself, you know what? The end result is worth it. I know, I know you like her. But she ain't your wife. Yeah, I mean, if you got a wife, <laughs> oh, glory to God. I know you meet up every day by accident at the water fountain at work, or by accident at now it's the Zoom meetings now, you know. By accident, and y'all just happen to stay longer at the end of the Zoom meeting than everybody else, talk about something. Why are you doing that, is what you're supposed to say. You so excited, you can't wait to get to work when you hated work. Why can't you wait to get there? Well, if it's on this list, I don't mean to depress you, but the word about to burn that up. That's why God says my word is like a fire. See, it don't let it don't let that corruption get in. What it does is it constantly faces you with the fact it, it, it cuts through that thoughts and, and it divides the marrow from the bone. And it says, I, I know this is what's really going on. Let's face it. And you're like, oh, how come every time I find somebody I like? They got to have a husband. Well, I don't know what to tell you about all that, but the point is, leave him alone. <laughs> yeah, just leave him alone. God knows what's going on. The enemy is always lurking, trying to set us up, trying to figure out how to get to your life so he can do what? Corrupt it. Because his ultimate plan is not just to destroy your life here. He really wants to see us get cast in that lake of fire with him. See, the devil already know where he's going. Let's go back. He, he can see it right here. The devil know the word better than all of us sometimes know it. You know, look, the devil, he, he know exactly what's going on. Look what the Bible says. The Bible says, let me get back to it right quick. Look right here. And the devil that deceived them, them being all of us out here, was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So he know, he already know the end. See, people always make it sound like the devil fighting God. Oh, he's come up with a new plan. The devil ain't got no plan at work. The devil is going into the lake of fire 
and he will be tormented forever and ever. And what he's trying to do is take as many of us with him as he can. You got to say, oh, no, I am not going into the lake of fire. Nothing in my flesh, nothing around is going to corrupt me to do what? Go against what the word says. Forget my dreams. Forget my visions. Forget my own words. Forget my own affirmations. Forget my own desires. If they come up against the word, let the word burn them up. Let a hammer bust them up. Let the fire of God do what must be done. Because all of it is chaff. See, see the question, will I choose the chaff or the wheat? Am I going to say, okay, when it's all over, I'm going to go with what God is saying, or am I going to go with something that what? I've heard somebody else say. When you look at verse 16, of, I mean, 26 of Galatians, verse um, chapter 5, well, verse 24 through 25, 26 says this. And they that are Christ, are you Christ? I mean, not are you Christ, are you Christ's? That's what the Bible says. Those of us who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. In other words, God's call to us is to look at our life and to crucify that life and to say, you know what? I know what I'm hearing out there. I know what I'm seeing out there. I know what people are telling me. But the reality is God says there's coming a day when I'm going to have to face him. And when I face him, what am I going to hear him say? He says, if we live in the spirit, let us walk after the spirit. Look at this last verse. Folks, if, if, if people could get this verse down, they could avoid so many problems. He says, let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another and envying one another. Think about this. If Christians could get this down, we wouldn't have so much church rivalry going on half the time. Yeah. Desirous of vain glory. If you didn't have, if Christian could get this down, there wouldn't be so many problems on your job. If you don't get the promotion, don't worry about it. Just say to yourself, you know what? God knows what he's doing. You got to believe that. See, if you don't believe that, then what's the hope? We don't have any hope. But if God be for us, who can be against us? Stop provoking each other. Think about church choirs. Lord Jesus, I said that one time. Who going to sing today? Why? Well, how about nobody sing? That's how you feel sometimes. Preachers. Who going to preach today? How about nobody preach? How about we go back with Paul where you get your head cut off for preaching? Then you ain't got to worry about it. Won't be nobody left to preach. We all realize, you know, there's enough there. We ain't got to say nothing. They can read it. But today it's all popular, you know, to be the prophet or the pastor or this one or that one. Not realizing that what, folks, God has already laid it out for us. Why are you envying each other? This one got something you ain't got. And, this, and if you think about all of this, if we can get, we understand these are the corrupting effects. I go home. Why do you think the Bible says this? Condescend to men of low estate. I've never found myself questioning certain things about where I live and all that until I go uh, to some mansions. And I'm walking through and going, wow, man, my house could fit like in the, this suite over here. Man, maybe I, if I should have, if, if I would have went on and just been a doctor instead of, dog. Oh. But now I'm, I'm almost 60. Ain't no way I could do this. And then like, now I got my head all down walking, looking all sad. And they're like, what's wrong with you? Well, I just left from Bookie Bookie Cemetery. And they got a house so big. And I'm sad because mine ain't as big. Paul said, condescend to men of low estate. Why? Because the more you hang around certain things, the more it's going to impact your mind. 
Folks, you got to live in the real. You cannot, you can't, you, God didn't instruct you on that. So while you on the internet searching and, and you looking at Hollywood this and now all of a sudden somebody pop up and they, oh, here's, look at this 65 year old woman that looked like she 20. Now that you flipping and now you're all mad. Talking about I could look like that, but. And then your husband come home and say, hey, you what, what, what? They're like, what's wrong with you? Ain't nothing wrong with me. You don't like me very much, do you? What are you talking about? Because <laughs> you don't let that stuff get in your head. Not men the same way. Whatever it is that we allow. Why? Provoking envy, jealousy. And God says, look, I want you to understand these things. Follow the spirit. Allow the word to permeate your life. Choose the wheat. Stay away from the chaff. Always see it anytime you get positioned or propositioned with anything that the word of God is telling you ain't right. Do your best to ask God to help you to recognize it so that what? You don't get hardened. You can understand if you see, and I'm going to close with this, how if all we spend our time talking about is how we're going to prosper in God and how we're going to do things and how we're going to grow and how we're going to this, how we could miss the weeds growing in the corner. It's easy to miss the bad attitudes. It's easy to miss the way we mistreat people, the way we mishandle people, the different things that we're doing that God finds to be wrong. And when it's over, our life is getting corrupted and we're not even realizing it. Why? Because we've strayed away from the word. Folks, we can't take one verse and start preaching out a whole doctrine on one verse. We've got to string this word together, line upon line, Precept upon precept, the Bible says here a little, there a little, that when it's over, you are the full stature of a person in God. Because the reality is when it's over, we are all headed for that bus trip. And the reality is we want to be in a position where what? You can stand firm and know that what? God is pleased with your life and where you are. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we thank you today for the opportunity once again to come into the house of God. I pray for everyone that's here under the sound of my voice and all those that are watching on TV and those that are listening online. Father, we pray today and ask in the name of Jesus, let the words of our mouth, let the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. And Father, help us to allow the word of God to be preeminent in all that we do. So that when that day comes and it's time for the bus to arrive for our life, that, Father, we might catch it knowing that everything that we have done was done for the glory of God. Father, those areas in our life that need correction, I ask that you would help us to see it by your word and help us to continue to walk according to faith. I pray again and thank you for the local congregation that we have here and ask that you would continue to bless their lives and keep them in all that they do. Father, we ask it even now in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Don't forget, if you want to join us for church, we look forward to having you come back. But what we wanted you to do, don't forget, contact us Friday by 5 o'clock, and then we'll get back with you if there's a problem or anything. Don't forget, online, we'll be there Wednesday at 7 o'clock, and we'll see you online for Bible study. God bless you all. Y'all have a good Sunday afternoon. Praise the Lord.